speaker, Mariam Sharifi, uh, I asked her, you know, obviously the same questions that I asked everybody else. She said that she is absolutely horrible with directions and has to use GPS four or five times before she can get to a location without having to refer to directions, which is still better than I am, quite frankly. So, uh, yes, here comes Mariam. She is ready to drop some knowledge. <laughs> So I moved to the U.S. from Afghanistan a few years ago, and one thing that struck me right away was that the U.S. has a lot of everything, food, electronics, cars, and especially clothing. Not only are there plenty of clothing, but they're inexpensive. We can buy a dress for under $10. I remember walking into H&M Zara in Forever 21 for the first time. I was so excited. The stores were huge, the lights were cool, and the music was fun. And the clothes were so cheap, cheaper than clothes in Afghanistan. I bought so many clothes. The first time I wore them, I felt great. But after the second wash, they would already look worn out and then I would throw them away. So I would go buy more cheap clothes. Sometimes I would look at my closet full of clothes and think I have nothing to wear, which is a common story for many of us. And one day I thought, how are these clothes so cheap? Who makes them? And are there any negative outcomes? And here's what I found out. Until the 1960s, 95% of the clothes in the U.S. were made domestically, and the average American bought 25 art articles of clothing per year. Today, most clothes are made in developing countries, and the average American buys 68 articles of clothing per year. Today's fast fashion industry produces clothing that is too cheap to be sustainable. It was a response to a huge market of consumers that were demanding high fashion at a low price. Most fast fashion brands like H&M, Zara, and The Gap introduces multiple items of clothing a day just to stay on trend. Fast fashion corporations outsource their labor to countries with lax labor laws or a willingness to overlook them. They often use child labor and force workers to handle toxic, sometimes carcinogenic chemicals, which can cause serious health issues for these workers. They pay their employees as little as $70 a month while they work 16 to 17 hours straight. In sweatshops where these clothes are made, female workers often are subjected to physical and sexual abuse. One of these sweatshops is called the Rana Plaza in Dhaka, Bangladesh. Their eight-story building collapsed as a result of a construction failure on the 24th of April, 2013. It killed 1,134 people and injured about 2,500. It is considered the deadliest clothing factory disaster in all of history. They were pulling bodies out of the rubble until mid-May 2013. This incident stirred a bit over horrific conditions for factory employees and raised questions about transparency in the global fast fashion industry. Aside from treating their workers poorly, fast fashion is terrible for the environment and is a great polluter of clean water. A research study shows the average US citizen throws away 70 pounds of clothing a year. That's equal to almost 200 t-shirts per person. Fast fashion is responsible for 92 million tons of solid waste dumped into landfills each year. Even though these clothes are cheap, they're actually expensive for all of us. They're costing us our physical health, the health of our planet, and for people working in these dangerous conditions, their lives. As a global community, we need to change the way we consume fashion. We need to change our obsession with consumption in the fast fashion industry, and we need these changes fast. We have the power to change the industry by how we spend our money. If we stop buying fast fashion, it could lead to better working conditions throughout the world. We need to consume consciously and examine labels to include organic fibers, non-toxic dyes, and ethical production. Fast fashion brands need to take responsibility as well. They need to address the exploitative labor conditions, chemical usage in clothing, and the waste they're creating. If even one brand refused to buy or source from sweatshops, the industry could transition from an industry that endangers lives and pollutes to one that helps protect workers' rights, human health, and the environment. I no longer buy fast fashion. I like to buy clothes that are made in the US and clothes that are made from sustainable fabrics. You can find amazing vintage pieces that are still in great condition. You can thrift as well. It's the most ethical and eco-friendly way to shop. Also, mending and repurposing clothing is an alternative to throwing them away. Now, when I look at my closet, I don't think I have nothing to wear. I think these clothes represent something good, sustainable, and ethical. 
And if we all decide to be more conscious with our choices, we could end the era of fast fashion industry. Thank you. Miriam's talk made me think a lot about the amount of clothing that I have in my house. And uh, I tell myself, well, I'm donating a lot of it to Goodwill, but I also realize that there's a lot of stuff to be learned for your talk, and I appreciate what you shared with us, so thank you. Um, we have